Conference on Endothelial Cells, Endothelial Conference. Here we see some endothelial cells around blood vessels. And uh, endothelium is really an epithelium. And epithelium lines the viscera, they line blood vessels. Uh, and the surface of cells are exposed. They have simple, if they're one layer, and they have junctions. So endothelial cells are like epithelial cells in that it has those characteristics. Simple squamous uh, epithelial cells are the endothelial cells that line blood vessels. And endothelium, which line blood vessels, come from the mesoderm. Endothelial cells, like smooth muscle cells and fibroblasts, come from undifferentiated connective tissue cells. And in doing so, these three together go together to make blood vessels. You had the adventitia, the media, and the endothelial or the intima uh, produced by these cells, undifferentiated connective tissue cells. Epithelium has junctions. You have zonia occluding, zonia adherence, macular adherence. Uh, these junctions we can see as terminal bars uh, in epithelial cells at the surface at the light microscopic level. At the EM level, we can see that indeed you have a, a same thing. You have zonia occlutans right here between two uh, endothelial cells. Here's another zonia occlutans going in through there, uh, which will prevent things from malignant from going uh, into the base and vice versa. And that's what we see here with epithelial cells, is that what's in the lumen cannot get through, and also from what's in the base cannot get into the lumen. So these tight junctions restrict uh, the passage of things between adjacent cells. And that's what it says here, is that not only does it restrict things, but also it keeps the, res the proteins uh, in their in the apical border separate from the basal lateral border by these tight junctions that uh, occur here. And uh, epithelial cells uh, can pick up things from one side and ex experience transcytosis to take it to the other side. And that's what we'll be looking at transferrin today and asking, is it uh, transmitted by receptors or, or not? Another component is the epithelial cell sits on a basement membrane and is connected, is connected to the connected tissue below. And fibronectin receptor on the epithelial cells is one of the uh, receptors on the cell that helps polarize the cell. So if you would uh, treat a membrane with fibronectin, it will uh, uh, cause the uh, epithelial cells, in this case endothelial cells, uh, the basal portion to attach to the fibronectin and create a polarized cell. So fibronectin is the histologic glue and there are receptors on the epithelial cells that bind to the fibronectin and you can use that as a means to produce polarized uh, cells uh, that then you can uh, test for a treatment on one side uh, or the other side. Epithelial cells, including endothelial cells, have transport. Transport is one of their items that they do, and some is cell-mediated, or maybe some may be bulk flow. Uh, and here we see endothelial cells, uh, a junction between adjacent ones, uh, and a marginal fold that folds over the junction when the cells come through. So here we can see endothelial cells here, very flattened ones uh, here and here and here. These are endothelial cells, simple squamous cells. Now, if you were going to design a blood vessel yourself, would you like to have flattened cells like this? Or you think that would be uh, less turbulent if you had cells like these, which are transitional epithelium, so the cells would have to uh, jump hurdles as they went through. A smooth, flattened cell is much more conducive to a uninterrupted flow of blood through. And that's what we see in these muscle cells. We see capillaries, continuous capillaries, and you can see junction between adjacent spaces 
uh, to maintain um, uh, the luminal content separate from the base from the basal contents. If we look at the cardiovascular system, uh, the capillaries where you have exchange of nutrients and waste, and that would be where we were looking for for our conference. Uh, in the uh, cardiovascular system, you see that the surface area is greatest whenever you have the capillaries because that's the one that gives the exchange and the capillaries like other ones are adapted to whatever the needs are in this case the metabolic needs and need to be thin walled vessels uh, here in the cardiovascular system you see the capillaries are only five percent of your total blood volume nevertheless it does a remarkable job and here we see a uh, junction between two uh, endothelial cells, and we can see infusion, uh, in, in, invagination of the plasma membrane there as vesicles are pinching off from the surface and moving from one to another, and that would be bulk flow. Uh, another way, in certain cells, you have uh, simple diffusion or you have vesicle transport, if we just seen, or maybe there's even channels that go between the cells. So these are different ways that it can go through diffusion, a vesicle transport, or maybe there's a channel like a, a finistra or a, a sinusoid. Um, and here we see the typical uh, endothelial cell with a marginal fold that flips over the junction there. And you get the fusion of these two making the tight junction. So this is one endothelial cell, another endothelial cell, tight junction between adjacent ones. <coughs> um, endothelial cells are active cells. They have receptors on the surface and that's what we'll be studying in this conference. And uh, blood vessels are adapted to metabolic as well as mechanical stresses. You have more muscle in the layer if you have more pressure, less pressure in the capillaries where you have metabolic exchange and you need thin wall vessels there. So the cell membrane has receptors, uh, and sometimes those receptors cause signals to occur. Uh, sometimes they transport things across, uh, like maybe transferrin. Uh, here we see that if you have receptors, there'll be two characteristics. One, it'll be specific, so you have a high affinity uh, for transferrin if there's receptors, but uh, also it'll be saturable. So it, uh, this would be simple diffusion, and so it'd be a, if it has a high affinity and then it's saturated, um, you keep having a higher concentration, it doesn't add more because you don't have more receptors to bind them. So membranes have receptors. Um, in terms of our conference consideration, uh, receptor-mediated transport model is what we're doing you have transport chambers to measure the crossing. So maybe you have a chamber uh, with polarized cells on it. You put something on one side and measure for its presence on the other side. We have SDS geolic to to measure the molecular weight to determine if things are degraded when they're transported through. Is transferring degraded? You ask the question, is the molecular weight the same? And that would tell you if it's degraded or not then transport chambers to measure the direction of flow. Does it go from basal to apical, apical to basal? And you can do that by putting things in one chamber and measuring in the other. And then electron microscopy to study the cellular detail of the pathway. So whenever you got cell mediated things, uh, a ligand binds to the receptor, then it's internalized somehow, and then you follow it through to the other side. And then finally, you deal with patients. A patient problem and you try to figure out, is it transferring receptors? Uh, is it the transport of endosomes? <coughs> what might be the problem with this particular patient? In terms of assays, remember that for you using electron microscopy to follow vesicles, you would probably use um, immunogold particles and you can have immunogold particles of different sizes and kind of follow them as transport through. However, if you're going to look for degrading of the protein, you're really going to have to do a gel to determine if the molecular weight has changed. If it's degraded, 
it will not have the same molecular weight that it should have. So in this particular conference, uh, it talks about a little article it read in Science about uh, transferring, going through endothelial cells, uh, and uh, uh, it tells you how to make a little chamber where you have a filter that proteins can go through, uh, then you, you put fibronectin on that, and then you take bovine uh, uh, endothelial cells and plate them on, on it, and the fibronectin will cause the cells to be polarized. And so you can get a base, and then you can get uh, the apex. Uh, and that using that model, you will do different things to try to determine if transferring is in one chamber or the other? Uh, is it degraded when it's transferred? Uh, how would you determine transfer is specific uh, or non-specific? Uh, transfer and transport could be unidirectional. How can you tell if it's unidirectional or bidirectional? How would you test this? If transfer was unidirectional, how would you speculate uh, that it would go from one way to, from the apex to the lumen? Uh, uh, from, uh, from the apex to the base, but not vice versa. How could you trace the pathway of it with electron microscopy and maybe immunogol, and then using the endothelial cells isolated from the patient who was unable to take up transferrin? How could you determine uh, if their inability is is to use transferrin or due to some kind of uh, transferring receptor transport system. So basically, uh, one and two are setting up a system for which you evaluate the patient in number three. Thank you.